Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to continue to have a look at the latest on the stratosphere. Now about 10 days ago we did our last update on what was going on in the stratosphere and we were seeing the majority of runs did have a stratospheric warming taking place. Nothing major, nothing crazy but a definite weakening of the polar vortex would, which would give increased possibilities of a disrupted jet stream and potentially colder patterns. Now, in the last 10 days, that has continued to look very likely, and runs are even now going for a sudden stratospheric warming. That is where the winds high up in the atmosphere in the stratosphere not only weaken, but they actually reverse from their general westerly flow, which they should be this time of year, to an easterly flow with a big warming taking place high up over the North Pole. Now, generally, these things happen every few years, but it does always get a lot of interest when they are about to occur. And we'll have a look at the latest runs, as the majority of runs are showing a big warming taking place, with some now going towards that major sudden stratospheric warming threshold. And then we get to the issue of what happens when we see that warming, because we can see multiple effects from a sudden stratospheric warming in terms of not only the polar vortex, but in terms of how it propagates through the atmosphere. So we'll have a look at what the latest runs are showing from both the ECMWF and the GFS to give us a good indication on the strength of this stratospheric warming and the time frame as well. So do remember, if you enjoy my videos, make sure you like and subscribe. And remember to follow me on Twitter as well, the link's in the description. Now, of course, I'm recording this on Christmas Eve. And the data we've got from the Eastern WF here is from the 23rd. So it's a day old. Uh, the 24th data will be coming out at some point later today. As of recording this, we've got the 23rd data, and you can see it's every week from the 25th, from Christmas Day. So you can see from the 25th to the 1st, this is the anomaly chart over the North Pole at 10 HPA, the typical sort of uh, pressure level where we look at uh, what's going on in the stratosphere. So you can see that where the polar vortex is, straight over the stratosphere, we haven't actually got any anomaly, so it's pretty much average, but... Especially on the European side of the pole, we've got a significant warming starting to take place. Now into the first full week of January, that warming, look at it, it completely consumes the Arctic. Remember, these are anomalies, so we're not going to see these massive dark reds everywhere. This is just the anomaly, so what it is compared to normal. And you see most of the North Pole here, high up in the stratosphere, has a very high positive anomaly, i.e. very big uh, warming trend here with the temperatures much much higher than they, what they would usually be. Now into the second full week we can maintain that warming over the stratosphere and it actually sends itself more across the North Pole again indicating perhaps a displacement or even a split event of the polar vortex. Specifics on that a little bit later. Third week in January, still a warming over the stratosphere, but it starts to weaken, and this is looking pretty typical, where eventually the warming does decrease and the polar vortex reforms. We are early enough in the winter now that the polar vortex will likely reform, which means that this will be an event, take place, a couple of weeks of very weak polar vortex or negative polar vortex, um, i.e. easterly winds, before the polar vortex re, uh, reforms, and we do see the westy, normal westy winds come back so it'll be very interesting to see what the rest of january and february have in store for the stratosphere if we do see this sudden stratospheric warming taking place but you see here on the eastern we have anomaly charts this is looking really quite likely we see a big warming perhaps even towards a sudden stratospheric warming level now, if we do have a look at the ECMWF line charts, this is looking at the actual zone mean wind. So what we're looking at with the temperature anomalies, these are the actual wind speeds. This is what really matters. The temperatures, of course, do correlate. You know, very cold temperatures normally mean stronger westerly winds. Very warm temperatures normally mean very weak westerly winds or, or perhaps even weak easterly winds. Now, you see here, over the next week, we've actually got a relatively strong polar vortex. Um, again, it's slightly below average but it actually is average right here for the last couple of days of the year but we see a big drop into the first couple of days of january from around 35 to 40 meters per second all the way down to three four five from the on uh, ensemble mean here with many going below zero which would be a major sudden stratospheric warming 
Of course, there are some that still stay around the 5, 10, 15 meters per second point. That would be a very weak polar vortex and probably would still have impacts, but not quite the drastic impacts that we can see from uh, a real sudden stress-free warming. So you can see here from the Eastern Blue F ensembles, again from the 23rd, the latest data is looking around a perhaps a third to a half of ensemble members are going for a sudden stratosphere warming and pretty much all of them are going very weak here as we head into the first couple of weeks of January and you can see it actually remains fairly weak all the way into early February so even though the anomaly chart did have those temperatures returning towards normal again you can see the actual prevailing winds the westerly winds here are actually not particularly strong even through the rest of the winter, which could allow any perhaps surface impacts from this event to prolong. Now, that's all the East of the UF data we have, and you can see clearly that the majority of runs are going for a sudden stratosphere warming, or at least a big warming in the stratosphere. Not completely clear, Clark, that it's definitely going to happen. It's not definitely we're going to go below zero, but a big warming is very, very likely now so there could be impacts as soon as the first week or two of january down at the surface but we'll have a look at the gfs data because not only do we have to you know look at the gfs and see what it says but we need some cross-model consensus what is the gfs showing now this is the latest gfs operational run again what we're looking at with the eastern f4 ensembles so of course ensembles are always going to have a little bit more spread but perhaps more accuracy uh generally because there's not single deterministic run whereas the gfs can be a little bit up and down because it is one run run every six hours but we'll have a look at some of the ensemble gfs charts in a minute but you see here over the coming hours and days through the rest of this year you can see the warming does start to take place across parts of europe into asia but over the north pole really it stays very cold the major warming starts to take place pretty much the last couple of days of december the first couple of days of january and temperatures perhaps getting as high as minus five or even zero degrees Degrees up high over the stratosphere and it does penetrate into the arctic here the gfs probably has a displacement event taking place where the polar vortex gets pushed out of the north pole some other runs i have seen recently showing more of a split event where the polar vortex actually splits into multiple lobes which some has are have argued is more of a an extreme pattern that could give a higher chance of colder more blocked weather towards the surface but again, there's not 100% science uh, backing that at uh, this stage. But definitely some would suggest that a split is more beneficial for cold weather, whereas displacement can have uh, more varied impacts at the surface. But it is still way too far away to say exactly how the polar vortex will respond to this warning. The only, warming, the only thing we can say is that a big warming is looking very likely to arrive how the polar vortex reacts whether it just gets displaced whether it splits um that is still something that probably is a good few days or even a week away from knowing in more detail now if you do have a look uh, over the weather is cool.com uh, this is the zonal mean winds uh, so very similar to the chart we saw from the eastern UF ensembles but this has got the gfs ensembles and it has got the cfs uh, charts here as well we've got the uncorrected and the bias corrected cfs but they really only differ in the longer term which is not particularly important right now but you can see the short term the both the cfs runs the corrected and uh, uncorrected are both going for a sudden stratospheric warming the gfs ensembles their sort of time frame is only f out to 14 days so only getting into the first couple of days into perhaps maybe the first week of january so we wouldn't actually expect to see a sudden stratospheric warming on these ensembles yet because it is looking around the sort of the day 15 to day 20 range of when we could officially see a reversal of those winds but you can see they do follow on very, very similar to the Eastern BF having a big weakening into the first couple of days of January and perhaps even some runs here getting down towards that sudden stratosphere warming level. So GFS in agreement, perhaps slightly more delayed, more runs are not going uh, for the very weak winds uh, for early January, but nevertheless during a very similar pattern. So it does look like there is pretty strong model consensus here you can see the red dotted line is what we saw last year 
And you can see for most of the winter, it was a very strong polar vortex. And then you can see into late February, early March, we saw a sun stress very warming. Much later in the winter, so it's much more likely to happen because pretty much every year we see a stratospheric warming as the polar vortex does disintegrate at the end of winter into early spring. But this is, was slightly earlier, about a month, maybe three, four weeks earlier than expected. Therefore, it still did have some impacts at the surface. And we did see cold weather in March. We did see a lot of snow in places, especially further northwards. So it did have a direct impact, but it was a bit too late in the winter to really cause any major widespread wintry weather. But you can see the red dotted line here. That's what we'd expect to see from these ensembles and from the darker blue line in the next couple of weeks if a sudden stratospheric warming took place. Now the last chart to show is a little bit more complicated, but it's basically showing the slice of the atmosphere on the y-axis, so the vertical axis, going from 1 HPA all the way down to 1,000 HPA, so 1,000 HPA getting towards the surface, 1 HPA right at the top of the stratosphere. On the left, we've got the actual mean winds, uh, the uh, winds... So anything positive is a westerly flow, anything negative is an easterly flow. You can see the surface is much more volatile, of course, we've got different pressure patterns up and down the jet stream, so the wind direction changes quite a lot. But up in the stratosphere, high up in the atmosphere, it's more stagnant. On the left, we've got the actual winds, on the right, we've got the uh, anomaly. So you can see at the surface, we're not seeing any major anomalies, so nothing crazy is expected. But high up in the stratosphere, look at that period around the 4th to the 8th of January, right at the end of this run, you can see a major change. You can see up in the tops of the stratosphere from the GFS here, we're seeing winds go to zero or even reverse. Less so down towards 10 HPA, so perhaps GFS not having it propagate through the atmosphere too quickly, but definitely a major negative anomaly here as we head into the first full week of January. So GFS in agreement and definitely showing something is definitely on the cards. Now I must say it isn't definitive, and we're not guaranteed to see a major sudden stratospheric warming, but it's looking more and more likely as every day goes on uh, and it definitely has developed significantly since our last update 10 days ago so there's going to be one to keep an eye on it's not going to have any profound impacts in the next sort of week or two maybe three or four weeks perhaps but immediate impacts we will see nothing but as we hit towards early to middle of january that's where things could start to turn incredibly interesting. And this does have effect on our daily videos, because as we've seen in the longer term, we have seen some colder patterns starting to re-emerge. And again, it's difficult to say whether that is a natural weather pattern and nothing to do with the sudden stratospheric warming, or if that's some of the ensemble members starting to pick up on that weakening of the jet stream, perhaps a normal weakening of the westerly winds throughout the atmosphere. So it is going to be very difficult to pinpoint exactly how it's going to develop over the coming weeks, but definitely does look like there could be some pretty major on the cards, and it does give some significant interest if you are looking for something colder and perhaps snowier as we head into January and into early February. If you haven't seen what a sun stress for a woman can do before, again, the beast from the east is always brought up as that is a prime example of what can happen, but that is, you know, if we're, if we're on a scale of impacts from a sun stress forming 10 being the worst impacts possible, the beast from east was about a 10. And most of the time, we're anywhere from around 3 to 7. So it's unlikely to be the beast from the east again, but the possibility is there. And we will just have to see how it does develop. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you have enjoyed. Hope you have a great Christmas. And I should have another update out tomorrow. Probably quite a short update because it is Christmas, of, of course, uh, as there it does look like there will be some more weather warnings issued for later this week, not only for heavy rain, strong winds, but also some snow for parts of Northern England and Scotland. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. And I'll see you again for another video soon.